So the other day when I was performing research for my Scotsman Skullcutter video, I stumbled upon this funny image which shows the most common strange counterparts put onto the Skullcutter. I had a chuckle at the idea that lots of people were putting the crit kills counterparts onto their Skullcutter, but the further I read into some of these, I realised just how strange and bizarre some of them were. Some of the most popular bizarre ones you can find on Scotsman Skullcutters globally include kills while you're on low health, point blank kills, kills only during victory time, and kills whilst underwater. My fascination in just how specific some of these scenarios are led me down a quite interesting rabbit hole that I've compiled for you today. In this video, I'm going to present to you what I believe are the strangest stat counterparts oh, in TF2. If you're liking this video and the theme of it so far, then may I ask you to subscribe as I have a lot of like-minded videos coming down the road. I've narrowed down my picks to the 8 most specific and strange ones, and I'll be covering them in no particular order except for the final one which gets my vote for the most strange, strange counterpart. Let's get started. So the first of the weird and bizarre that we're going to be covering today is the Freeze Cam Taunt Appearances Tracker. Why does this exist? That is so specific and actively encourages you to taunt after every kill, which is just a not very nice thing to do. So this is a strange filter that can only be applied to cosmetics and could originally be unboxed in the Series 76 crate along with some fairly normal strange counterparts as well. So how this strange counterpart works is that if you taunt once you've just killed someone and your taunting pose shows up in their kill cam, you will gain a point towards the stat. Now in case you're wondering if I'm going to start bringing up all the prices of these strange parts, I'm not. This is not a marketing video, this is just an analytic video about how strange some of these strange parts are. As with this one for example, I really don't understand the design incentive for encouraging players to taunt after their kills. It would not only enrage the other guy you just killed, but also probably get you killed as well because you're standing still. But after looking at it, there seem to be a lot of rage baiting strange parts, so maybe we'll cover these first. But just know, for this one, I just really don't know why this exists in the first place. Okay, so since we were just on the topic of rage baiting, I feel the next strange part we should cover is the unusual wearing players killed part. Oh no. So whenever you kill an unusual wearing player with a weapon that has this stat clock attached to it, you will gain one point towards that stat. And note that you can kill one player who has an unusual several times over and it will count as several points towards the stat. And the final statistic I have to list is that this stat clock could originally be unboxed in Crate Series 75 along with Spies killed and Burning Enemies killed. So as I said previously, I believe this strange part only exists as rage bait. I believe it's meant to make you feel better about yourself for killing unusual players because generally unusual wearing players are quite good at the game. However, in terms of gameplay perspectives, I actually think this is a very poorly designed strange part as it encourages targeting. Now I don't have a problem with strange parts that count your kills on a specific class because that doesn't really incentivize targeting, that's just playing the game. However, when it comes down to purely cosmetic changes, I don't necessarily agree with this idea. But I do find it funny that this exists, as it could just only be for such a reason as this. There's no real in-game reason other than just it makes me feel better about killing supposedly good players. So this part is a weird one, it's not always going to be racking up because there's normally only going to be about one to two unusual wearing players in your average game, but I still find its inclusion to be quite weird and quite funny actually. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you, this next one just straight up infuriates me because number six point blank kills literally doesn't work half the time as it's intended to. Okay, so that's not entirely true, but what Valve considers a point blank kill and what everyone else considers a point blank kill are two vastly different things. So I would personally consider this point blank. However, Valve does not. In order for it to count as a point blank kill, you have to be physically touching the enemy. Now that might make sense on paper, yet you have to remember that every weapon in TF2 can deal knockback to an extent. So actively getting your opponent into the range of getting a point blank kill without knocking them away, without giving them opportunities to retreat is insanely difficult. I've gone through Steam forms and Reddit threads and apparently it's even incredibly difficult to get melee weapons to trigger as a point blank kill, especially the Demo Knight swords because of their extra melee range. So this part could originally be unboxed in crate series number 77 and I find that funny because all of the consecutive crates we've covered at the moment have all had some incredibly strange parts in them. For all of you who are very interested in TF2 in terms of mechanics, I'm very sorry I couldn't find an accurate hammer unit measurement as to how close you have to be to someone for this to trigger and that's because Valve has never publicly specified this measurement. 
I don't know. I'm not really angry at this part, to be honest, okay? I accidentally ripped a button on my favourite pair of trousers earlier, and the doctor said he could reattach it, but if you keep watching this video, I might be able to afford the thread. But just note, this is not the only strange part on this list that requires a specific measuring scenario in order to activate, and Valve has not specifically specified what that scenario is. Okay, so number 5 in terms of weird and random strange parts is low health kills. Now, if you have this part, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that this is extremely difficult to get this part to trigger. So funny enough, this part is one of the older ones we're going to be covering today, as it could originally be unboxed in Crate Series number 49. And for this part to trigger, you must be at a low amount of health whilst killing the enemy. And just from me saying that alone, you must now understand why this part is so difficult to get to trigger. So once again, I've looked over it and I cannot find an official valve source as to what this number of health you must have must be in order for this part to trigger. However, community testing tells us you must be below 10% health. Again, there could be an officially valve cited source somewhere, but I just cannot find it. But I know what you're thinking. Lonkador, you incredibly charming and well-groomed man, so well-groomed to the point where it's actually a shame that you've never had a Manscaped sponsorship before. What exact health number do I need to be for every class to get this strange part to trigger? So first of all, thank you, and second, I was literally just about to say. So in order for this part to trigger on Scout, Engineer, Sniper and Spy, you are going to need 12.5 health or less. Now I naturally assume this would be round up to 13, however Valve is Valve, so this generally could be 12 health or less, it could be 13 health or less, I don't know. For Medic, you're going to need 15 health or less. For Pyro or Demo, you're going to need 17.5 health or less. Again, should be rounded up to 18, but I'm genuinely unsure. For Soldier, you're going to need 20 health or less. And for Heavy, you're going to need 30 health or less. Now, health reducing items do factor in this, like for example, the Big Earner would, but I don't know if the Dilokus Bar would, yet I do know that the Kunai would, and I'm just gonna share this one with you now. For this strange part to take effect on a strange Kunai, you are going to need seven health or less. Apparently it's quite common to put this on the Kunai, naturally thinking the plug would be somewhere around 20 for every class, but no, you're going to need seven health, so I don't recommend putting this on the Kunai at all or any weapon for that fact. So next up in terms of weird and dumb counterparts is number four, underwater kills. Now that might sound like a perfectly normal thing you want to track for some reason, but let me tell you, there is only a handful of maps and one weapon under one scenario in which this would ever be a useful part to have. Yeah, I don't know, I really just understand why this part exists. I tried to find a wiki handful of maps that do contain water that are in the casual rotation. However, it was listing lots of maps that had water in outer bounds areas. So in terms of how many maps actually have playable water surfaces on, I don't have a number for you, I'm very sorry. But I don't know, it just kind of seems like a weird part to have. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's fine, we do have the airborne kills part, but just so little maps have water when all maps have air. It just seems like a dumb decision to me and a waste of time. I don't know, if, if I could make a strange counterpart, it would be number of Guilty Gear players killed, because as of recording this, some Guilty Gear woman or something the other day came out with a giant key. I'm not really too sure, good for her. And I just, I feel Guilty Gear players like Guilty Gear a bit too much. So yeah, I'd like to be able to track the number of Guilty Gear players I've killed. In, in TF2, of course, not, not in real life. So earlier on in the video, we were talking about rage bait and how certain strange parts seem specifically designed to anger certain types of people, which is why I think number three taunting players killed fits that bill and probably should have made a debut earlier in the video, actually. This strange part is going to see one use and one use only. It is going to be placed on an Aussie rocket launcher and it is going to be used by the soldier who believes that he's just playing the game by killing friendlies. Which, yeah, is true, but they're not actively hindering your game. You know, the Gibbous Scout taunting with the enemy Gibbous Heavy, they're, they're not really hurting your gameplay, so you can just leave them alone. So this strange part could originally be unboxed in Crate Series number 85. And I haven't done this before in this video, and I won't do it for any other future ones, but I just wanted to take a minute to appreciate the icon they've used for this one. So this is actually a pair of bongos symbolised by the Conga Taunt achievement. <laughs> and it's just a pair of bongos being shot at, I find that really funny. But yeah, I don't really have anything else to cover with this one. It's just going to be used by the wrong players for the wrong reasons, and as they kind of see it as a badge of honour, don't they? But just, you know, leave them alone. Killing friendlies isn't going to make Valve add a strange pair of gunboats that you so desperately crave, so just, what's the point? 
Okay, so we're getting really close to number one. And just a reminder, none of these are ordered except for number one, which is what I believe is the most strange, strange part. However, number two, full moon kills, comes pretty close. So this is full moon kills, not Halloween kills. That is its own separate part. So on average, the phases of the moon take about 29.5 days to complete, which means in theory, this strange part should only be usable 12 days a year. However, for once, I, I'm rejoiced that we actually have some data as to how this part works. So full moon events in TF2 last for 48 hours, and they happen every 29 days. So every 29 days, you can use this strange part for two days. It's, it's, so that's 24 days a year in which this strange part can actively be used. This does mean that the full moon cycles in TF2 don't always correspond one to one with the full moon cycles in real life. But I also should note that we didn't know any of this until the 2020 source code leak. Valve, I don't know how hard it is to give us information like this. I don't know, this is a weird strange part, but what's weirder still is that this strange part originally couldn't be unboxed and could only be got from the random item drop system. It seems a lot of players these days don't know how the item drop system works. If you'd like me to make a video on that, let me know, but I have linked some down in the description below in case you're more curious. But just note that this part is weird. However, it's not the weirdest or strangest part out there. There's one more which I actually think takes that cake in much bigger slices. This video has been a lot of fun to make. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I never have any clue as to how a video will do before it's released. So this could either get 2,000 views, it could get 10,000 views, people could hate it, people could love it, I don't know. But if you do like it, please do like and leave a comment as these are statistics YouTube uses to kind of share the video around. So I'd be very grateful, thank you. Anyway, so my number one pick for what I believe is the strangest or weirdest or dumbest or just most situational strange part out there, whatever I put in the title, is robots killed during Halloween. Let me break this one down for you. So first off, why would you be playing AVM during Halloween? Second, both these parts already exist in separate parts. There was no need to combine them. We don't need to combine airborne kills with underwater kills, for example. There was no need to combine these. Third, again, why would you be playing MVM during Halloween? There is no bonus. There are no unique maps. There is no nothing for playing MVM in Halloween. So I don't know why you would be doing it. And lastly being, again, I just don't understand why you would be playing MVM in Halloween. I don't understand the design motive of this strange part. I don't understand what the developers were thinking when they thought, hmm, lots of people must be playing MVM during Halloween, so why don't we make a part for it? A again, I really don't understand from a pure design incentive why this part exists. And this part falls into the same category as the full moon kills one, as this couldn't originally be unboxed and could only be gained through the item drop system. Of course, nowadays it can be unboxed, but just, again, what's the point? So yeah, this one takes my vote for the single most strangest and random strange part in TF2, purely because I can't understand what the developers were thinking when they added it to the game. But hey, turns out I already had this one. It's apparently been on my sticky launcher for a very long time, and oh look at that, it's never been used. Thanks for watching everyone. Sorry I couldn't necessarily demonstrate these strange parts in game, it's mostly because I don't have the money for strange parts, but thank you very much for watching regardless, I've had a lot of fun making this, and I hope you've enjoyed the editing as well. At some point in the future I'll be doing a video designing new strange parts that TF2 doesn't have yet, so if you have any ideas for those, comment down below and I'll feature your comment in the video as well. A developer commentary version of this video will be going up on my Patreon as soon as I finish making it, so look out for that in the future, but apart from that, thank you very very much everyone for watching and I will see you later down the sunny road.